Welcome to the Kiwi Mana Day. Happy New Year! This week we are talking about bee friendly gardens. Are two queens better than one? And Swarm shuts down school. This is episode 83 of our beekeeping podcast. The executive producers for this month's show are Aaron and Lauren Jennings from Jennings Apres. Yeah, thanks guys for all your support of throughout awesome. the year. Awesome, and hope married life is treating you well. Yes, indeed. I hope you guys had a good New Year's and had, had some time to relax with the friends and family. Yeah, we've been thinking of you and hope all is well. Shout out to everyone there. So thank you for listening today. I'm Gary. And I'm Margaret. And we are Big Hibbers from the Hills, the Waitaki Ranges in West Auckland, New Zealand. And our podcast is about beekeeping, gardening and political issues sometimes, about environmental problems. And we often go off on tangents. No, not really. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe sometimes. More about that later on the show, guys. Okay. Well, currently it's January here in New Zealand. So that means we are in the middle of summer and it's our holiday season. And um, the reference to this time of year is due to a request from the native river otter. You know who you are who requested a time scale for point of reference with the show. So we hope this helps and... Please concentrate on the road. That's it, that's it. We don't want anyone to crash their cars while listening to the show. That's it. And what about the show notes, Gary? Well, the show notes are at kiwi.bz slash 83, and that's for your benefit. So when you get out of the car, you can look up the show notes and find all these amazing articles. Indeed, and and thanks so much for taking time to listen to our show, and we know life is busy, so we appreciate you taking time to be with us while we do this work with you and for you. And, yeah, thanks for joining us today, and Happy New Year. Awesome! What's happening? Yeah, what's happening at Kiwi Mana for you, Gary? Well... We've already talked about Happy New Year, so that's awesome. Happy, happy. And this new podcast player on the show notes from a company called Lipson that we have our podcast hosted with, and it's got some cool features. Have you checked that out yet? I haven't because I got a new phone for Christmas, so I've got all of these things at my fingertip now. I just need to learn how to use it properly. That's right. So Santa. that's my challenge for my New Year's resolution, to use my phone properly. <laughs> Yes, Santa brought you a new phone. He was very good, wasn't he? No, That's... I was good. That's why I got the phone. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's good to hear. Good to hear. All anyway, right. this new hey, player. Hey, hey, yeah. I was just going to ask you, is there anything that we can share with our listeners about how to use this thing? And what is it for exactly? Yeah, this is a player for the podcast, and you can listen to our podcast with it. And it also makes it easier to do clamours. You know what, what a clamour is? What is a clamour? Clamour is a short little snippet. Some people think a clamour is something not quite I polite. Thought a, I thought a clamour was something in the sea, like a scallop or a clamour. <laughs> anyway, a clamour is a website that they have a short snippet of, of of a podcast or a song and people listen to them and they go, oh, I like the sound of that, I'll listen to the whole thing. Oh, so it's like a bit of a taster in podcast terms. Yes, like an introduction. Oh, awesome. That sounds good. Some people think of, think of it like Twitter for sound. Okay. And this new play allows you to download it and also allows you to skip forward and skip back in oh, case you miss something thing. out. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you do want to listen again, don't you? Yep, you do. So check it out at, <laughs> at our show notes at kiwi.bz slash 83. And it's been very wet here in New Zealand, and there's a cyclone coming in this week or tonight. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. So rain is around, so good time to check out the podcast. And I've been busy making boxes and frames. I've been finishing off some of the boxes that Margaret started. It's been awesome. We've got all those done. And it's been great over the holidays to meet our customers and I really appreciate everyone coming over and saying hello and I really I really appreciate especially Wendy and Evie for bringing cakes. 
Oh, yes, and we got some, didn't we get some chocolate biscuits the other week when Jim and Jill came to visit? That oh, was yes. awesome. It was awesome. Thanks, guys. We appreciated that and enjoying some time sitting on the deck while there was no rain. So yep, talking it was to a you guys. hot day that day, that's for sure. Absolutely. It was an awesome day. Bit of sunstroke, eh? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I love the holiday period because everyone's... Everyone comes up to Auckland and visits us. It's That's fantastic. It. Yeah, well, so we because we can't leave our bees. <laughs> yeah, it was great to catch up. And what else has been going on? Well, I was interviewed on a new beekeeping podcast called Thinking Bee Podcast by a guy named Stuart from Indiana, and he interviewed me last weekend. So that was going to be probably coming out soon. So that's great to see another beekeeping podcast in the world, eh? think it's great and yeah i hope that it uh, works out for him and you know we we support as many people as we can in their projects so that's a, another project we like to support and share with our audience absolutely so we'll uh we'll we'll have a link to that podcast so you can check it out and then put that on your phone and have a listen awesome and uh what other th- i've had some issues with the with my bees for laying workers and very slow queens. Oh, where was this, Gary? At our other apiary, at our uh, quarantine apiary. We've had a queen that is not work. She obviously um, didn't wasn't mated properly, or I think it's probably a laying worker, and she's just laying drone after drone after drone. Yeah, yeah. She's droning on. Drone. So I've done some drastic measures. I, I followed some uh, ideas I had. Uh, I, I try to add some frames of um, eggs for a couple of weeks. Nothing happened. No queen cells. Oh, that's so, always tough, eh? Yeah, it was tough. So I'm thinking, well, they think they've got a queen, so that's what, why they're ignoring the eggs. They just, they just, they just kept them over and started doing some making some brood. Oh, so okay. what I've done is I have shaken all the bees out, put an empty box where they were, Put uh, some frame, a frame in the middle with some nice fresh eggs from another hive, and I'm just going to pray that next week there'll be a queen cell waiting for me. Yeah, that's a good method, and yeah, we well, just we'll have to wait really because it is getting later on in the season. Well, that was that massive swarm that we got in uh, near near our house in Cuma. It was a huge swarm. So why do you think they don't have a queen? I possibly think they may have even swarmed at one point again. Maybe over Christmas or something, and that, so the hive is a lot less less people on there than it usually is. I was going to say less. Oh, okay. I was going to say less staff. <laughs> They're and, all uh, on holiday. Well, that that's possible. And what happened is the old queen might have swarmed and left no queen or no queen cells there, and they okay. might have just yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking that might be what happened, or or the queen, the new queen, went out and got eaten by a bird or run over by a car or yeah. hit by a drone. You know these. Drone flies, flies. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, yeah, so we'll we'll keep you posted, guys. We'll hopefully we'll have some updates about that. And we're having these new beekeepers Q and A's every Saturday when we can. So it's usually every Saturday, and we'll probably keep you updated there. So if you come along, ask ask a question how they're going. Okay, we're going to go into the Q and A thing a bit further on. Aren't we will. We? We'll talk about that awesome. further on. And so, how are you, Margaret? Yeah, it's all good. I had. A very guilt-free after New Year's. The rain rained for about four days, so I had lots of time to catch up on my Zs, and that was great. So no guilt involved there, but uh, the girls were trapped inside for about four days, eh? Yeah, it's been pretty pretty miserable, eh, for them? Yeah, but uh, at least it wasn't really windy and, you know, nasty. But, uh, yeah, we've, we've got some failed colonies in our apiary, which I've checked for disease. Can't see any disease results, but they just, it appears that the new queens, I don't know whether it's the quality of the drones in the area, but they just don't seem to have um, mated well. So I've also got a queen that's, I definitely saw the queen in one of the colonies and she's laying, but they appear to be just drone um, drone cells. So that's a bit of a concern. Yeah, I think a lot of this is happening. I think yeah, that it's because of the, when, they, when they were going out, it was pretty crappy weather, wasn't it? 
This one was an earlier raised queen from oh, a okay. split, so I'm a bit surprised. There, there's nothing untoward in the cells. The, all the drones are hatching. They're perfectly awesome. The queen looks well mated, but maybe it's just the quality of the drones in the area. That's the only thing I can really think of. Yeah, it could be that she didn't get um, mated properly or something, eh? Yeah, so I'm um, not sure what we're going to do about that. I'll check her again and see. Maybe it was just a hiccup when she first started, but, you know, it's quite a long hiccup. Absolutely. And how, how's your varroa management going? Yeah, this is the time for us here in New Zealand as we come to the middle of summer. Middle of summer is when there's um, huge amounts of foraging going on with all the, um, you know, desire to collect as much nectar for their honey uh, stores over winter. And so I found in one of the colonies, which is a thriving colony, which I've done, you know, about four new colonies from, and all of them doing really well, and they had varroa in the worker brood so that's pretty significant so usually I will treat about February and I'm going to be using Appy Life Bar which is a thyme thyme oil that's my choice before the end of the uh, summer. Yeah we've got a question about that later on so we'll, we'll revisit that Yeah I also mentioned about monitoring. Now monitoring is about knowing the state of your hive in terms of varroa levels before you treat. And the reason for this is to, if you do your monitoring before you treat, then a week after you've finished all your treatments, do another monitor. And that's just, could be a 24-hour monitoring, you know, on an inspection board, or you could do a sugar shake or whatever method you choose to use. But do it a week after you've finished the treatment, not while you're treating. I mean, all that will show is that you're killing Varroa, but you want to have a before count and a week after count. And that is so that you can see the drop. If you've still got quite a high level in there, you can, with these organic treatments, you can actually run them a couple of weeks longer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I, um, I did a sugar shake count on one of my hives in the weekend and it had... Had three, three out of three thousand, so three hundred. Three mites on 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 the board. Yeah, and I I did a photo of that and put it on Instagram. Awesome. So um, yeah, that that probably needs to be treated too. That was one of the ones that's she's not laying very well either. Yeah, it's been a funny season. Last year was pretty tough. This year's been tough. I've had some beginner kits which I uh, can't do anything with. Really, it'll be a case of merging with them with a stronger queen and hope that they, you know, as long as they're clean and there's no disease, I will merge them with a queen that's um, coming up but is doing a lot better. So, you know, it's about the only option. And what's this about nectar absconding queens with colony? What is that about? Nectar? Oh, absconding queens with the colony. We've had an issue with nectar within the brood and we have talked about this before that when the bees start putting nectar in amongst your brood it means that they are not having enough room for the queen to lay so and that's within the brood box so you need to tell them or indicate to them that there's more room so in that brood box you need to remove any nectar frames on the outside and put empty frames in and then have some empty frames right in the middle above the brood. Oh, you've been on the second level. Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, what that means is that the queen will think, oh, look, I can't lay heaps of honey, everything perfect, but they just leave because she can't do anything. And if she gets egg bound, then you've got a whole other issue. So you really need to make sure that within the brood chamber, you have got some fresh comb and to the sides of the pollen so that they can draw that out and take any nectar that's in that brood chamber and move that up. Yes, indeed. You've got to give, give, her, give, the, give the queen space to lay, don't you? Otherwise yeah, the space absolutely. gets full of honey. And the thing is, is with that is that you go in there one day there like, you know, you could be just looking at it and not inspecting your hive at all. Then you go in and have a look, and there's no bees left. 
and there's heaps of honey and everything else, but no eggs, no queen, everyone's left home. Not good. Not good, and we don't want that at this time of the year either. And what's helping out a few issues? Um, well, the, the other thing was is the beginner kits have gone, the ones that were successful have gone, so I'm going to go and meet with some of those beginners and check their colonies out, make sure everything's all right at their new houses. So that's the, the, my next step. Um, and the helping out thing was, was about some of the issues that, that the people are having at the moment. And, and one guy bought a colony and he didn't get a queen with it. And because he didn't know anything about it, um, his colony was getting smaller and smaller. So I don't know what happened there. Oh, that's right. It, yeah, I, I remember so that. So we helped out by giving him a um, a really good laying queen that has just come on and she's doing really well. She's got about four frames with brood coming on really awesomely. So we hope that that will be successful and that... Um, oh, that was good. Yeah. yeah, that was a laying worker as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, the cells look clean and everything, so I don't think it's disease related. But because that was the one he purchased a swarm from someone else, eh? And it didn't have a queen in it. He thinks. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I remember now. Well, you know, a lot of people don't know. They just put the box on the on their property, and that they just start beekeeping. And uh, unfortunately, if you don't don't get something sorted out within the first three weeks, and there's new brood then you're pretty uh, screwed really aren't you well that's a trap for young players isn't it if you're buying a swarm of someone always make sure that they've got their laying the queen's laying and there's good brood in there yeah i definitely recommend that when you are buying new um a new colony that you inspect it before you take it and you take a friend with you if you're not experienced you try and get someone from maybe a local bee club to come along with you and go through the colony and have a good look at it and uh, get their opinion on it as to whether it is, you know... Strong. Queen, yeah, yeah, queen right and healthy and got enough resources there. Particularly at this time of the year as well, because if they haven't got enough nectar, some colonies fail. Absolutely. Good work there, Margaret. That's awesome. Okay, so the helping out issue, we just um, will check results as we go along. We've got a couple of colonies that we split, and we're just holding on to them until the a couple of questionable colonies are proven to be okay. We put you know new eggs in there and split them from another colony. So once they're sorted out, then uh, yeah, hopefully sailing into winter. And my my piece of advice at this time of the year. Do your varroa monitoring, then do your treatments. Try and do it over four weeks if you're using organic treatments and if there's presence of mites, two extra weeks longer and, uh, yeah, before and after counts. Absolutely. I think that's fantastic. Thank you so much. (laughs) You're doing great work. Oh. Let's move on to blog recap. Awesome. I've got no queen. Dun, dun, dun. She's not laying now. Oh, sorry. Don't know where she's Blog been. recap. Where yeah. is my queen? She's she's gone. She's not I laying. I got yet. the blues. Let's move on. <laughs> Top three blog posts from last month. Awesome, we, we, awesome. First okay. one. Temperature is rising. This is our last podcast. Almost. A lot of listens, even more yeah. today. I hear the temperature is rising. Nearly a thousand listens. Thank you, everyone, for listening. That's fantastic. Woohoo! And the next one we had honey extraction idea for Manuka. A great tip from our Australia, Australian reader. And you know a bit yeah. about this, don't you? Yeah, this is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we, we we got another tip that came through who who shall remain nameless or anonymous. And that was that you can put your honey box and wrap it up in an electric blanket. Oh, to heat the honey a bit so it makes it easier to yeah, flow. Keeps yeah, keeps it warm. So um, another one said that you could use the electric blanket and then put it inside an old fridge 
And that will keep the heat in to keep the honey at a soft level. So, yeah, lots of ideas. Absolutely. I was thinking, you know, a wax extractor in a hot car would be awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. But when you go around a corner, all the water flies out, so that could be bad. But the thing is, is that, you know, you don't want the wax in there. You just want the honey to be able to be moved out oh, of that Oh, yeah, wax. this, this so, is... Cause you know, it's a fine game we're playing on the edge of the heat, you know? Absolutely. You don't want to get it so hot that all the wax, the, the wax melts and all the honey drips everywhere. <laughs> That's yeah, because I, I know that commercial guys have rooms and they put the honey in and they heat it before they actually extract it to make it flow more. So, Yeah, the actual extraction room has some sort of sensor which keeps it at a certain level so that it is that the, the honey keeps warm and the wax stays secure enough for the extraction process because, you know... Wax in your honey isn't that nice. No. Well, not if you want your honey to be clear. Some people don't mind a bit of wax, but... Yeah. Well, comb honey's beautiful, isn't it? I'm not... I, 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 I don't mind. If the bread's nice, it's awesome. <laughs> Toast, lots of butter, gallons of honey. Oh, yeah, it sounds awesome. Pancakes. And now, number three, they, tangent, tangent, them? tangent, oh, alert, ta- oh, alert. Oh, no, no. Top three blog posts. Wee, woo, wee, woo, wee, woo, Third one is... How long should I wait to see eggs? This was a post I wrote in response to a question on a New Zealand beekeeping forum. So oh, I this thought, is well, a this really is, good question, eh? I thought, well, how long should you wait? And you have a checker there. If you, this guy was asking about when he puts a swarm into a box, how long should he wait? And I'd well, say about 40-odd days. No, I'd say that if she's, if she's a swarm, the, the theory is, is that she's an older queen. So it, as soon as they start to draw comb, you should start seeing eggs. We had one swarm that within seven days she had been laying eggs straight away. So yeah, that's in the beginning of the season, but later on I think the queens are often virgin queens. But you're right. If, if it's yeah, a laying think, queen, you yeah, should be all right. Late season swarming is a, um, a whole other kettle of fish. But when you're talking about new in the season and there's a new swarm coming, it's usually, as I said, a an older queen, so you should see, you should definitely see eggs in there within 10 days. Absolutely, and a lot of people in the Northern Hemisphere are saying that they want their spring back, but I've told them that we have to have it for a few more months. Yeah, and we're, we're having like quite a bit of rain, and it's usually for a few days at the moment. It's great for the water tank, and you can have a longer shower, but holy moly, it's just been, you know, the bees just, as soon as the sun comes out, they are out of there and they are collecting. And the other thing with this rain is the lawns. I just mowed the lawns and now they're like six inches taller again. So And then it gets all muddy. So oh, it's this ongoing battle with nature. Well, nature will take over. It's bananas! Banana! Anyway, let's move on to oh, beekeeping okay. news. Ooh, ooh. Here we go. Kiwi Mana, beekeeping news you can use. First one from Honey Bee Sweet, the fantastic Rusty. We interviewed her, didn't we? Indeed. She's a we great did. lady. Hopefully, if you're listening, Rusty, how, howdy. Greetings. And this one was a guest blog post from Bill Heshback of Connecticut on, on, the, on the Honey Bee Sweet blog. And it's an interesting idea of having a bee colony with two queens. Interesting. This is interesting, isn't it? So basically, you put you have two two full or deep brood boxes. You stick them together, and you put queen excluders in the middle, or a, a flat queen excluder in the middle. Have some different kind of roofs on the outside edges, and then up through the middle, you put supers. So you've got two two four complete boxes, each two lots with one queen. And they both provide workers to fill the boxes up. Yeah, it looks like an interesting concept. I don't know if managing those sort of honey supers would be very easy. Um, I think maybe if it's right in the honey flow, you know, you might need to manage them a bit more regularly maybe. Yeah, it is interesting eh? because, I mean, I know at the moment, well, some of our 
our our hives are bringing in a box a week. So if if we had two lots, would it bring in two boxes a week? Or yeah, three? it talks about that the two queen system depends on productive forage and accurate timing of your main nectar flow. So. Yeah, I think that is something that this article will take you through and and share with you some of the things that they've done and what it what it achieves for them. So it's a really good artic- article and you might find it of interest, guys. And there's some good photos there so you can see how they've set it all up. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's a good idea. I think Rusty's mentioned she's going to try this in, in their spring. She's over in Seattle area, so... Oh, we'll see be how, good. We're interesting to yeah. see how it goes. It, it, that's what I like about Rusty's thing. She tries stuff out so we don't need to. Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, why uh, reinvent the wheel? The only thing I could find, the only thing that concerns me about it is the roofs on the side above the brood. Oh, I, I'd say that would, wouldn't it leak down the side of the box? Yeah, I think so. Here in New Zealand, we would struggle with the rain issue, wouldn't we? Yeah, so I don't know how that works. So we'd have to... You'd have to maybe modify that for New Zealand. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's a um, very good consideration. I think it's a good point, Gary. That uh, yeah, we you know you've got to suit the the climate that you're doing the tests on, and as we know, everyone's got a microclimate. So, I think probably we'll hear how it all goes and um, hear about that when um, she's got some results. Absolutely, and what I yeah, absolutely, and what I'm thinking maybe what you could do is what you suggested once was have a huge roof on the top super so it like it protects the whole box. Yeah, you could. But do anyway, that. they didn't seem. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see. We'll hear about it. We will. We'll Good talk luck to with that, Rusty. Absolutely, and the second story we're talking about is how to make your garden bee friendly. This is some great tips from a blog by Xander Vanka in the US. I'm sorry, I've got your name wrong there, Zander. Sander Fanaka. Fanaka. About making your garden more bee-friendly. And tips include adding colour to your garden. Absolutely. Don't, Smell. Don't use insecticides. That's it. Have plants with a strong fragrance. Yes. And also set out a dish with water and sugar. I'm uh, not really sure about that one. <laughs> And there's many more. I don't think these people are beekeepers. I think they're gardeners. Okay. Well, That's I all think, right. I think the issue that I would have is sugar waters out there, um, they'd have to be very weak because you don't really want to encourage other bees coming to your apiary because that just attracts them to robbing. So. Oh, no, this this article was written for people that don't have bees because they're trying to attract bees to their... Oh, so, okay. So adding adding water and sugar would definitely attract a lot of bees. Oh, thank you for but clearing just, that uh, up for me. I missed that. That's all right. Just be aware that um, you get a lot of robbing bees and it can be quite exciting. Would that be the word? Yeah. Talks about planting ground creeping mint. Yeah, it's it's a good it's a good little article, eh? Yeah, and I and think it's a great I, blog too. I, really I was enjoyed interested it. in this and saw that this guy is from bringbacknature.com. So I went and had a nosy at the website and they have got some really good stuff about you know, doing things well and having a balance. And I think if you're into that and you want to learn some things about, you know, living naturally, this is a really good website. So go and have a look at that, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Is it kind of like a permaculture website? Is that the kind of gist of it, like living um, in harmony? And I think it is. Uh, it is. It's a bit holistic about what they're saying. And um, I love the, f- the fact that they talk about no... Um, you know, herbicides and that kind of chemicals. Absolutely, and we're we'll, we'll quoting from the article, bees are the most prolific pollinators and a standout, I agree, amongst the best things you can welcome into your garden, but, well, maybe beekeepers are better. They are, sorry, just joking, they are an essential part <laughs> of our ecosystem and fulfil an irreplaceable job in our food supply. Ever asked why you have a tree brimming, blooming, brimming with blooms, yet never get any organic product? A reason may be an absence of bees pollinating your trees. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, so true. And they talk about making um, shelter for the bees, things like that. And and I've I've actually had you know seen some articles about creating 
you know, pollinator kind of castles and things like that, which I think is great because that attracts a, a, a wide range of uh, insects. And basically what they're saying is that by taking these steps, your garden will improve for your own enjoyment and give the occupied bees a spot to visit often, giving you the advantage of their labours as well as doing your part to ensure their continued existence. Absolutely. So thanks, Anna, no. for that article. It's awesome. Awesome. We'll have to uh, talk to you one day about getting some talking about bee friendly plants. Awesome. And the next one is a fight between Langstroth and Top Bar Hives. Oh, yeah. The, 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 and in one corner, we have the, the Langstroth. The off. Yeah. Ding, ding. In the other corner, we have a Top Bar Hive with a little funny, funny frames. Anyway. Great post from Hillary from the Girl Next Door Honey blog. It's just, this is about the pros and cons of different hive types. And we've got both, haven't we? So we can we can answer, talk to the, about this. Yeah, we've got some a, a <laughs> topper hive which is going absolutely... Banana! Awesome. So, yeah, she's going crazy. And it talks about the pros and cons. And whether you are new to beekeeping and trying to decide on a hive style or just curious about the new design, there are some definite advantages and drawbacks for both Langstroth and Top Bar Hives. Absolutely. And she also mentions that you can be 100% a natural beekeeper in a Langstroth hive, and I, I have yes. to agree. We, we actually are coming to that understanding and it really is about learning how to deal with the top bar um, situation, I find that I have to close off my top bar quite a bit because there's not much to protect the bees from underneath. So it's, it's very interesting. Absolutely. And also a big shout out to Phil Chandler who has just released a new book called Managing the Top Bar Hive, Balanced Beekeeping Number 2, Managing the Top Bar Hive. And he's, he's the guy behind the Barefoot Beekeeper. Yeah. And I would highly recommend this book. It's a good book for anyone that's starting a top bar hive because managing yeah. a top bar hive is got some different challenges in a yes, lang strip, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that there are some, you know, uh, methods that she talks about in here, but I'm not sure she, from a commercial level she doesn't use, she's only got a few top bar hive so you know maybe that's what it is some are commercial maybe a summer hobbyist um, or urban backyard beekeepers yeah so absolutely it's so. got some really good points in here and yeah she, uh, she talks about some things to do with health and that was one of the reasons why it took a while for the top bar hives to be approved in New Zealand for use because there was concerns that they wouldn't be able to inspect them properly yeah, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, I just think you need to get a different book. So get hold of Phil's book and also check out his, his podcast. Yeah, and, and he's, this, um, yeah, he's promised sorry. to release some more episodes this year when he after because he's finished his book. Yeah, and I think this just gives you a bit of a basic understanding. But you know, always do your research and maybe talk to people who have diff, you know the different types. If you are starting to get into beekeeping, do you want to have something that's easy to manage, or what is your actual ultimate goal? If you don't want to worry about the honey, you just want to have the bees there then you'll still need to manage honey to a certain degree. But if you're not extracting it, then, you know, how do you deal with that? Yeah, exactly. I, th I think a top bar is a great idea for if you've just got one hive and you just, you know, you just want to extract a frame at a time if you need to. I think it's a great idea, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yep, absolutely. So check that one out, guys. And there's some nice photos of some top bar hives there, which look pretty cool. Absolutely. So that's Langstroth versus Top Bar Hives from Girl Next Door Honey Blog. And she's got some great other articles. So check her out. She's got some good stuff there. Yes. And um, you guys can decide who the winner is here. We'll leave that to you. I think it's just like art, isn't it? It's, it's a up to personal, personal preference. Anyway, 50,000 honeybees have been found during the construction of the Birmingham Transit Facility. Well, that shows you just how much they um, look after their transit facility. That's right. A huge colony has been rescued from a construction site in the Midlands, and this is the north of England. 
kudos to the builders for calling a beekeeper and not a pest controller. Yay, well done, guys. That's awesome. Yes, absolutely. That's I, I wish more people did that. And workers made a surprising discovery recently when beginning demolition as part of the construction of a new downtown Birmingham intermodel facility. 50,000 honeybees. Wow. What's so, an intermodel facility? I have no idea. I, I do like this article. It's very basic. I mean, 50,000 is actually one colony effectively, don't you think? Yeah, there's a bit of a typo in it. Eh? It says something about it was put into four hives. I think it means four boxes. Yeah, I'd say it would be a, a fully working colony. That, that's a big hive, eh? Four yeah, boxes. pretty much. It also depends what size boxes he put them into. Well, this is a, <laughs> they might be match boxes, so it's not that great. <laughs> Indeed. And, uh, yeah, shout out to all the people in Birmingham because they've lost one of their uh, favourite sons, haven't they, over the weekend with Lemmy from Motorhead dying, which was sad. We watched the funeral, didn't we? Yes. Um, you know, to those of you who are like me who... Didn't really follow the, the the band as such in my younger days, but what? why not? But learnt a bit about life from this uh, situation, and we also watched a little documentary to do with him to celebrate the guy, you know, Lemmy Kilmeister. Absolutely. So rest in peace, Lemmy. Anyway, let's move on to Monchin researchers. I think Monchin's an area in Canada. Isn't it? It's Moncton. Moncton. A buzz over possible arthritis treatment. This will be handy for all the older beekeepers out there. This is this is something that we've often heard about with in terms of bees. And this article just talks about the the honeybees could help them unlock a new treatment for inflammatory diseases such as arthritis. So there they've got some guys leading the project and they're getting a lot of uh, funding which means that they have done some tests already and they say it's looking really promising. That's right. And the and Moncton is in Canada, I've discovered. Yes, it is. And they're studying yeah, the effects and that, that. And we, we wonder if the component in the propolis is only in the area of the university. Yeah, or is that it, was, or is it all, yeah. Is it all propolis? Yeah, we had a bit of a chat about that. It's like, I don't know, I'd sort of put it on the same level as manuka. You might be able to grow manuka trees in another country or whatever, but the earth and the soil and everything that creates that uh, environment for growing that product may not be available in another country on different land. So I don't think you can actually replicate it exactly. No. Um, yeah, unless you, you know, completely change the whole dynamics of the, the dirt. Well, it's a, it's a component of lots of things. It's like, you know, because Guinness tastes nicer in Dublin, doesn't it? <laughs> it's all, it's the same thing. Well, does G&T and taste Heineken better tastes on nicer the, in Amsterdam. Does G&T taste better on the Riviera? No, it tastes better on our deck. We <laughs> like sitting there. <laughs> you know, this, so, is, this yeah. is some interesting, interesting research, guys. So check it out. University of Moncton. Yeah, and we wish them all the best with this, and we hope that if this product does come on the market, that it's going to be available to the, you know, to the ordinary person. And I, my understanding of Canadian health uh, system is that you're all entitled to, to be helped under that system because of the way your tax system works. So. I really wish the best for um, this project and, and you know, because it's very painful to have these inflammatory things happening in your body. And, uh, yeah, we wish them all the best with this one. Absolutely. And the next story, dun, 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 shock horror, swarm of bees shut down Waikato School. God, who'd have thought that bees actually swarm? <laughs> a Waikato School was locked down after a giant, giant, Un- underlined, of yeah. swarm of bees descended on the grounds. The third such incident in a week. Fire crews were called to the Kite Hair School on the west coast about 2.15. It's Kafia. Kafia, can't speak. Tuesday, after a large swarm of bees appeared within metres. Metres, I tell you, swarm. of the school. Descended on its grounds. The third such incident in a week. And this Giant. is uh, this sounds like another apocalypse happening. They should make a movie. I love I love the way that with these sort of articles they make it so emotive. So now they have put the fear of bees into all these poor children at the school. 
Yeah, now, I mean, that's, you know, tangent, whatever. Uh, it's yeah. so true, you know, that but, all they're doing is creating a fear with them. Well, and they had, they had the whole school fenced off with, like, those, like, crime scene tapes and they were getting the kids to walk out holding hands at... Oh and they my went, God. To, went to, around the back and, you know, and as tall as a tree. I mean, if you get, if you see a bee swarm, just move away and just be still. They don't want to hurt you. Anyway. Yeah, I, I find, you know, I understand that it can be a bit alarming to those who are not in that world of beekeeping. But uh, I wish the the... the principal had a bit more understanding about the whole thing rather than creating this alarm situation and even the fire guys you know you'd think that they would have been (laughs) trying to educate as well because this is a a situation which could have been blown out of proportion and create some other situations I, i think it was blown out of proportion yeah but my point is is that it could have created another situation which May, may have needed some other element to kick in, like panicking children or, you know, that kind of thing. You, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, look at this quote from the teacher. We had a good view of the bees as they were coming towards our school, towards our door, actually, as if they were going to run in the door and attack everyone. <laughs> and she said, it's a well-rehearsed drill, given it was a third flying, flying insect-induced lockdown in a week. Okay, well, the, the the last couple of lines says, everybody is fine. That's what kafia is like. We all look after each other. Well, that's Hallelujah. awesome. And congratulations, a key, a local bee enthusiast, but had been called to help deal with the swarm. So Yay! I oh, thank God I didn't spray the swarm with foam or something like they usually do. <laughs> oh, well, in the end, the result was there, and hopefully the, the kids have learnt something without having a fear-based reaction to it in the future. So, yeah. Yep, indeedy. So, so that's yeah. uh, interesting, isn't it? Some interesting things have been going on, haven't they? Absolutely. So, yeah, what's next, Gary? Right, let's move on to questions from... You. And that was the Tui. There's our wonderful local Tui, just awesome. Okay, so. Questions from you. What have we been getting asked, Gary? You asked, we'll try and answer. Can I use Appy Life Far now? This is from Jerome in Auckland. That's a good question, and, and my... I would like to have a sub-question to this, too. Okay. If I've got a virgin queen, okay? Okay, yeah, no, I think it's very relevant. Okay, so firstly, what is Epilifar? Epilifar is an organic treatment. It is, fr- it was, it is made from thyme and the oil, which is thyme or oil, is mixed with eucalyptus and camphor. And used as in a wafer form, and the oils are in the wafer, and it's very easy to apply. You can use it now, and you're looking at getting it into the colony before the end of summer, so before autumn starts. So you're probably looking at February, and yes, you can use it now. The temperatures are okay for it, and it's very effective. I'm going to be Jerome. Okay, I've, got, I've got honey supers on. Is it still okay? This is interesting because in most circles, you would have, unless you're a commercial guy, you might not. But if you're a hobbyist beekeeper, you probably would have taken your honey off before the Tutin rule. And the Tutin rule says that you should take it off before the 1st of January. So by the end of December, you should have your honey off. So therefore, whatever treatment you use from that point on, you could you could put it in, okay. But if you are taking your honey off later at the but later on, then with Appy Life Far, it doesn't harm it. It's not poisonous or anything, but it does flavour it, okay. So it does. And the other thing that happens with this treatment is because it makes the hive really excited because bees get really excited with time. They groom and they buzz around, and sometimes when it's a hot day, they will come outside. But it does smell, doesn't it? Yeah, you can smell it in the hive. So um, some people say it's a listerine type um, flavour. 
that doesn't harm the bees in any way because it's organic. So it really is a personal choice at the end of the day. It hasn't bothered us. We only take off a few frames of honey. Um, mostly it's left for the bees, so it doesn't really bother them either. And ingesting it is, is okay because the varroa hate it. Supplementary question. Is it okay to use when I'm trying to raise queens? Okay, no. No, I wouldn't either. Because it would, it would hide the smell of what's, the queen. What do you mean? It would what, hide... What's the smell of the queen? What does that mean? If you get a new queen and she comes in the hive and then all of a sudden there's got epilife bar and it might... Do you think the smell might put the other bees off? Unfortunately, this oh, has no. occurred this season. I've had some beginners who have put the um, Appy Life Bar in when they're raising a new queen or they've swarmed and there's queen cells in there and they've put the treatment in. And the, what happens is that because this treatment is quite highly scented, it can actually affect the pheromones of the new queen taking over the colony and the pheromone is used to motivate the colony and if they don't think they've got a queen or she's just not, you know, working out well, they will not be a productive hive and some of them abscond at that point, you know, and then what's left behind is very little bees. Yeah, I think that the reality is is that when you're raising a new queen, you've got to break in the brood cycle anyway. And unless yeah. the hive is really infested, you know, you, that's why you should monitor. But you can use Epilifar now. It's a uh, pre-winter treatment. And if you get it done before autumn, then you should find it very efficient. And, yeah, the, you check your cells as well, I think, is the other thing. Absolutely. And moving on, we had Robin from Christchurch asking, how thick is medium brood bee comb foundation? I'll and leave that with you, Gary, because uh, you... I you're, researched this absolutely. with my measurement device. And... <laughs> no, my, <laughs> your measurement device. I, love. I use my digital measuring device. Okay. <laughs> Especially designed for oh, this sorry, specific guys, question. Sorry, guys, tangent. Is that a tangent? It was for me. Anyway... <laughs> Quiet in the cheap seats, please. What? Quiet in the cheaper Insulting seats. Insulting me. Anyway, the comb foundation is what we use on beehive frames to get the bees to start something. Some people don't use it. They use this like a strip or something or a, or a, or a triangle wood to make them start on that. But this is medium brood. So you can have different levels of brood com, um, foundation. You've got light or thin, which are often used for comb honey. Uh, and to be honest, I, I wouldn't use it. I, I would just use no foundation for co money. But anyway, some people use well, that to get them started. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you're talking in terms of wax foundation sheets. Yes. Which are generally used within a wooden frame and wired in. Absolutely. And then at the other end of the scale, you've got commercial people who use a really heavy manuka foundation. And that's used specifically for manuka honey, where they can extract it, I guess, because they can... Spin it out a lot faster. We talked about this in the latest Beekeeper's Q&A as well, didn't we? But anyway, and yeah. the answer to your question, Robin, is... Two mil. Two mil? Yep, two millimetres. And how much is that in inches? I don't know. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> two mil is... is Two mil is pretty thin. It, it's pretty thin. <laughs> Just enough so that you can embed it. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's uh, and it works really well. The medium one is what we use generally here all, yeah. all the time. We actually sell that as a, a standard stock item because that's the most popular and it's it's suitable for the hobbyist. But when the bees really do want to make drone comb or larger honey cells. They will still do it from that foundation sheet. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And how do you make, next question, from Oscar in Melbourne. We Good like, day, I, Oscar. I like Melbourne. It's nice. I could live there. Yeah, it's a pretty beautiful city from what I've seen. I've never been there myself. I've been there. Been there, a done there. A few times. Just for work. But how do you build beehive frames? Well, one, I could answer this. One piece at a time. Well, you got your four bits, stick them together. This is the this is the ch the 
and we should do, we should do a video about this because a lot of people ask this. Well, this. we've got that article that I put together, a very basic one on how to yeah, that's a good, um, that's true. Assemble a frame. So we'll put the link in the show notes. The link for that. is there um, for you guys, and yeah, very simplistic. And this is when you're talking about behind frames, you're obviously talking about wooden Hoffman frames, which is the term that they call them. And yes. Yes, four pieces. Four um, pieces stuck them together. PVA glue. We use Aqualine. Aquid hair. Aquid hair. We use nails, six mil galvanized nails. One point two five. Yep, two on the top, two on the side, two on the bottom. Yeah. I always glue them first. Yes, absolutely. And then I put the nails in and I use the staples for the wiring. Yes. And it's point four six oh millimeters. Yeah, the, this is all wire. The, this is all in the article, guys. If you're driving, don't worry, write this down. But we yeah, keep your hands on the wheel, and you should keep your eyes on the road. We don't yes. want any people hurt in the name of beekeeping. No, absolutely. And what we do is we put a wire around it, and we also I, I use staples for to put it against the hole on the inside. Yeah. To stop it digging into the into the wood. And yeah. fancy people use eyelets, which we'll have soon. Yeah. There are quite a few and, different uh, methods. Yeah, you can use eyelets or you can use staples. Yeah, there's lots of different methods. Yeah. And you could put if you if you're using it for basically honey frames, you can also nail from the side rather than the top because some people find that if they only nail two at the top, then the the top bar can be pulled off, but if you've got a side nail, gives it a bit of traction. And also, if you use your Kiwi Mana Hive Tool or the Kiwi Hive Tool, that will help you to loosen up the frames before you pull them out because it's about just treating them a bit gently while they're in the hive because once they get properized, they can be really quite stuck. So it's also making sure that once the finished product is in the colony that you manage the separation and get that propolis detached from you know each frame yeah I, I think that's a really good idea to put one one on the side and one on the top because i often not often but I've, I've seen it happen at least five times in my life anyway and when you pull up the frame the actual top bar comes out and the frame stays in the height yeah and if you put that nail in on the side on a bit of an angle pointing down gives you that extra traction so absolutely and if you yeah. And also it's good to pre-drill your nail holes so you don't split the wood. Yeah, you can actually, you know, they say beekeeping is, a, is, is its own art form and I definitely think that. And some people create their, their art differently from others. So basically what we do is give you a, um, uh, an essential guide on what we do. And if you want to go into any more detail, then it's there's heaps of stuff out there that you can have a look at. But ours is Absolutely. A, an essential way to as- assemble. And the way we do it is pure art. <laughs> it's anyway. like a visual symphony. And we've trained lots of people Which how to do it. Which is pretty close to my article that I'm writing too at the moment. Okay. If you have any questions, please email us info at kiwimana.co.nz. I just want to speak to this. Okay. About what? Okay. Our Q&A which is in line with questions from you, is actually something live. And you can join us and ask your questions at a Q&A meeting. For yes, beekeepers. this is a new thing we've started doing on, on the service called Blab. It's called blab.im. And it's a beekeeper's Q&A, and we're doing it every Saturday morning, pretty much every Saturday. Yeah, it's a it's a process that we're going through to see what sort of response we get because if we don't get enough people engaging with it then we won't do it but if you're keen to do it you could also um, join us and be a part of it it's really cool and you know we have a bit of fun with it but we've got one that we put out on YouTube eh, for the sad day just gone yeah we'll we'll have that in the show notes and there's a talking about we answer some questions on the internet is this, it's like a it's like a video of me and margaret and also you but you guys can join in and ask your questions and you we can, did it on yeah. saturday morning so that beekeepers around in the northern, in the southern hemisphere can come along and ask questions before they get out into the bee yard That's it. yeah yeah and then we then uh yeah 
So, so they can, you know, use the answer to plan what they're going to be doing with their bees. Yep, and people in the Northern Hemisphere can do it on their, I think it's their night time. But uh, tell us, tell us, give us some feedback if the times are really not working for you, tell us. And maybe we can arrange it slightly different times. At the moment we're early, sticking but. yeah, we're sticking to the Saturday morning and yep. you check out our the one we did last Saturday. And also if you want to you can go to our homepage and you can put a question through SpeakPipe. And SpeakPipe it will just press the it says leave a voicemail. Press on that, and it'll you can leave a voicemail with your microphone on your computer. Yeah, awesome. So you know that's another way that you can get your question to us. It'd be great to hear your voice. It would be awesome. And it really would. You know, we need to get some more Kiwis out there joining us and helping us with this the it, whole bee thing. Well, it's and, awesome. And, and other countries are evil. We love everyone. I appreciate that. So we'd really like to see you on the next Beekeepers Q&A. So thanks, and I'd really like you to come along next Saturday. Yeah, I think it was interesting that we do have people from the US of A who are coming along, so that's been good. Absolutely. And last week we had someone from England and someone from North Carolina. So yeah. it was interesting. And we had Herschel the week before, so from Richmond, Virginia. It wasn't Richmond, Virginia. Was it? No, it was Buck. Oh, somewhere in, somewhere in Virginia. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Virginia? that's it's kiwi.bz or bz slash live, and you can join a, a, a mailing list to tell you when the next one is. Okie dokie. Now, what's next, Gary? Feedback from you guys. <laughs> Firstly, thank you so much for you know getting in touch with us and sharing your comments and we appreciate you taking time to let us know what you think about things. The first thing that we, um, we, we'd like to present to you is from what's wrong with this pick. <laughs> and this Why don't we is start from, with a good one first? No. Okay. The United States of America... He's only given us one star. Mm. Okay. This is so, our first yeah. one star. We're devastated. We, we really took all our holiday season to try and, you know, heal from this and try to uh, recapture our vigor and our enthusiasm. And I'll just read you what's said. Great podcast, minus the, the newfound Kevin moments. <laughs> so sorry, Kevin. We've had a, you know, had this comment. We've had a request, Kevin. We have to get rid of the Kevin moments. But we still support you, Kevin, greatly. We okay. we still love you, Kevin. Don't and worry. To continue on, it says one star for the moment. So we have got the opportunity oh, to do the, better. There's hope. There's, there's hope. hope for us. That was on Sunday, the sixth of December. And the guy's name is What's Wrong with This Pick? That's it. I've already said that. And oh, yes, sorry. it's good to let them know who he is. And so, we appreciate you taking time because we can always learn to do better. Yes, hopefully we can we can get a bit better in your eyes there. What's wrong with this pick and increase your review. But anyway, yeah. we don't Awesome, awesome. We just, so, we're glad you're here. And good or bad, we'll take it. Because for, we can yeah. always work from there. And for any Kevin moments, check out bkcorner.org for all the Kevin moments. Awesome. Any other next next review? Great Woo-hoo. Kiwi. Great Kiwi podcast. Yeah, yeah. This is from Will.iPod. And he's five stars. He's from New Zealand. Another great Kiwi podcast to get stuck into. Really impressed with Gary and Margaret and their chilled out, laid back, informative style. That's cool, and we we well, I sort of know Will a bit. He he does the podcast called My Kiwi Life. Oh, that's awesome! And it's a really good podcast. Well, you guys will have to go and see Will dot i dot pod, and have a look at what he's putting out there. Oh, that, that's that's his username. Oh, username. Address. Sorry. We will have a Please link. Please excuse me. <laughs> we will have a link in the show notes to Will's podcast, and he interviews Kiwis from around Kiwiland. And he's recently Kiwi had. Nirvana land. He's recently had. What's that guy's name? Arthur. 
Oh, the bachelor. The bachelor. Who's, who's, uh, as I suspect, is not going to be a bachelor for much longer. <laughs> it was a, t- a TV reality show called The Bachelor. He's the star of The Bachelor. He was recently on. Oh, He's had and a few... he, cho- he chose Matilda. I don't know watch it. I didn't see it, so... No, I did. It was it was interesting. Anyway, it seems like they got. Anyway, not talking about that, but yeah, no, that's Excuse cool. Me? Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Bananas. Tangent alert. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for taking the time, Will. And um, what's wrong with this pack? That's um, awesome. We really appreciate you. Would have been nice to get a name with that, but you know that's all cool. <laughs> and yeah, it's all right. Anyway, let's move on to email. We had a great email from Noel McFarlane from Beekeeper Society of South Australia. Okay, it's we my like, turn we now. Like, we, my like, turn we now. like South Australia. We like Aussies because they have such positive and they send us information and it really it's a real good connection and we love to hear how they're going because we compare it to where we're at. Um, so we love hearing it. So thanks for that, Noel. And here we go. Hi, Gary and Margaret. The temperature sure is rising, 37 degrees Celsius today and 40 tomorrow. We are watching and making sure the girls have shade and lots of water sources. Great stuff. A quick note to say Happy Christmas and New Year's from Beekeepers Society South Australia, Adelaide. A big thank you also for the time and effort your team, there must be dozens, (laughs) Put into your presentations. That made me, that made me laugh. Okay. Yeah. We are having a slow but steady build up in the suburbs, but a report I've heard is that the spring rains went to growth rather than flowers in the bush. Oh, okay. We had a huge fire just north, north of the city, 330 square miles burnt out, but it was in a grain growing area where we don't have bees. Glyphosate glyphosate and no forage well okay no, maybe it's good. a blessing in disguise anyway all the best for the rest of the season keep up the great work Noel oh, thanks, thank you Noel. so much we'll do a plug for you yes that's awesome so check out the South Australia Beekeeping Society at bees.org.au Cheers. and I will pass on those thanks to our team of hundreds of people yeah. <laughs> in the background they're all little elves building podcasts and stuff so that's awesome no that's fantastic really appreciate yeah. it Noel thank you and we had a great n- comment from our great friend in the Solomon Islands Patrick Purcell and we missed you seeing you yeah Patrick you, come, you should come to our Big Hibbers Q&A yeah I think it'll run a bit better than the last star uh... oh we're getting better we're getting better well done, Margaret and Gary. Thank you for sharing your big, big knowledge and news. Happy Yule Tide from the Solomon Islands. Yule Tide. Well, greetings and Yule Tide to you guys too, and hope all is going well. And yeah, we hear that there's some bad weather coming, so you guys uh, batten down the hatches and take care out there. Absolutely, and stop press. We have a message from Neil Beeson. Great name for a beekeeper, isn't it? Absolutely. Hey, Neil. And he just told us about a lightning strike near his house. Look at that. Do you see the picture? Where's that? Near his house. A lightning. A tree where where is he based? He's in Australia. Oh, that's no good. And um, it reminds me of that night where we had 137 or 147 lightning strikes in a period of two hours. God, yes. It, it looks like it's killed that tree. It has. So Neil, Neil's a uh, beekeeper from Australia, and he's had some good luck this year because he's finally got a whole lot of a good, some good source for his bees. So That's fantastic. Shout out to Neil. Yeah, it must be tough over there sometimes. Yep, and Neil, we're going to have a we're going to have Victor Conker on in a couple of weeks, and you can he's from Australia, so you can listen to how a commercial beekeeper in Australia operates. Awesome. So thanks to Noel and to Patrick. And, you know, for taking time, and we appreciate your good wishes, and, yeah, that's why we do what we do, and cheers, guys. And Happy New Year! Yes, indeed. Happy New Year. And if you can do anything to help us, if you could leave a review, if you're on iTunes, please leave a review. That's kiwimana.co.nz slash iTunes. Leave a review and try and get more than one star, please. 
all the months out, <laughs> no. please. The no, thing, we appreciate the feedback, mm. guys. So you just do what you need to do. Yeah, and the other thing you can do is also if you want to compete with our patrons, which are Aaron and Lauren, then you can actually make donations to us through the Patreon button that we have on our website. If you want to, you know, donate something to us, that's be awesome. We can always appreciate any donation that comes through. Absolutely. So until next time, this is us signing out. So really appreciate you guys coming along this week. And we know we know life is busy and we really appreciate you taking the time to listen to the Kiwi Mana Buzz. And we will see you in a couple of weeks. Cheers, guys, and enjoy.